Sports Scene TV special. I'm your host, Ryan Layton, with friend to the show and author Spencer Stuvey, here to promote his second book, UCLA vs. Uh, USC, A Rivalry of Hate. But first, let's talk about the first book you wrote, because that one had a lot of success, the encyclopedia of UCLA football from tears to touchdowns. Tell us how that was a success for you. Yeah, I wrote the book. It came out last year, uh, last November, and it's exceeded all my expectations, sold many more copies than I actually thought it would. Um, it's an in-depth UCLA football uh, encyclopedia. Um, covers every season from 1919 through 2015. Covers all the greatest players in school history, uh, the biggest games, the biggest moments. Um, has an all-time roster. Um, it's just something that, you know, it took a lot of work, and, uh, and it's, actually, it's done very well and something I'm really proud of. Yeah, and of course, we premiered that book here on Sports Scene TV, a great book, not just for UCLA people, but for college fans. Now, this new book, t tell us the process, because, uh, you know, it, it's both schools now. Right, it's about right. the rivalry. Tell us the process you went through to really write this book. Well, after writing the UCLA football book, I really had kind of all the UCLA information that I needed as far as games went, as far as players, personalities, all that but I was really starting from scratch on the USC side. You know, I had you know, my basic information as a fan and really needed to make that into, okay, I need to be an expert in this field so I can write a book on it. Um, so there's a lot of studying on USC, um, on their history. Um, as we both know, it's a rich, long history. Um, so you know, really was reading up on, on the rivalry itself and on USC's greatest players, greatest games, greatest moments, and everything that you know, the two sides, and they all came together um, to create the new book. And, and now, uh, I am very thankful. I, I got to write part of the foreword on, on the book, and, mm -hmm. and I did grow up a, a longtime USC fan, obviously got to play in the program. Um, and then you got Randy Cross on the other side, which I'm a yeah. little embarrassed. I mean, Randy <laughs> Cross, two-time All-American UCLA, uh, NFL All-Pro, Super Bowl champ. How, how did that come about? I mean, you get the great Randy yeah. Cross to write the foreword for you. Well, first of all, no reason to be embarrassed. Um, <laughs> as far as Randy Cross, um, after writing the first book, he heard about it. Um, he got himself a copy. Um, started following me on Twitter. We would just, you know, interact here and there, random, you know, college football stuff. Um, and so, you know, we got to know each other a little bit. And so, you know, I reached out to him and, and asked if he'd be willing to write it. And you know, it was something that uh, he was willing to do. And uh, so he wrote, wrote a great forward, told of his story at UCLA and and what the games against USC meant to him every year. Um, and you know, he started off. You know, he grew up a Bruin fan. Mm -hmm. um, so for him, it was a lifelong thing. Um, but then when you actually get on the field and you get to actually experience the rivalry as a player, um, it's different. And so he tells his story um, and you know, tells his side of the story of uh, you know, the rivalry itself. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're researching this, obviously you had a chance to look at that information. Uh, I know you spoke to players from both schools. What's the one story that, that really pops, that, that blew your mind, like I didn't know this, or um, one that our readers or listeners are really going to go like, whoa, I, I didn't know about that I, one either. I think the, the founding of the rivalry itself and how they, you know, how it was created really was what stood out to me the most. Um, not that it was all that surprising, but just that it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, the USC, their first football team was 1888. They were founded in 1880, started playing eight years later. Um, and from the very beginning, they were a strong program. But like most programs of the time, there was you know, lack of interest, you know, new coaches every single year. And uh, so it took a while to really build the program. Then by the 1920s, they get Howard Jones, and he builds a powerhouse program at, UCLA, or at USC. Mm -hmm. UCLA, on the other hand, they weren't even founded until 1919. And they played football right away, but you know, they were behind. And so by 1929, they were ready to play USC, not because they felt they were ready, but because they thought it could elevate the program. And so they, know, they knew that in the beginning, 1929, 1930, they were going to lose, and it was going to be embarrassing. But they knew that just playing USC, kind of, it set the bar, it gave them something to, to reach for, and kind of put them on the same level as far as respectability uh, as USC, because, just because they were playing them. Mm -hmm. And for USC, they, you know, they thought it was a natural rivalry as well, but they knew that they would be elevating UCLA. So it was kind of the, the risk-reward on both sides. And so just kind of the back and forth and how it got to be uh, really was probably the most fascinating thing for me. A win, I mean, because now it, it's carried over to all sports. Right. I know this book's focused just on the football, mm -hmm. um, but now anytime USC, UCLA plays, it, yeah. it could be water polo, and, yeah. uh, and obviously that rival runs deep. When, when did it really turn to be this great? I mean, because like you said, it was early yeah. 1929, you know, yeah. the UCLA is a new school, uh, kind of playing the local Southern California Redlands, right. Whittier type right. teams. 
When did it become what it is now? Well, it was kind of over time. You know, you know like I said, they played in 29 and 30, and both games were blowouts. USC destroyed them, 76 nothing in the 29 game. Then they took a five-year break. And UCLA, they got a lot better in those five years when they weren't playing. And USC, they had kind of plateaued. You know, they were still a strong team. Um, but they weren't, you know, what they were in the late 20s. Mm -hmm. um, they won back-to-back -back national championships before playing UCLA. So when, they, when the rivalry started, it was, it was David versus Goliath. By 1936, when they played again, they were kind of on even footing. And the 36th game was a tie. And back then, no matter who you played, the team that won got the game ball. Mm -hmm. Well, since it was a tie, no one knew what to do. So it kind of became a big fight, big argument. And so, you know, beginning of the following season, the 36th game ball became a trophy. Then 39, UCLA gets the victory belt, was just a huge brass belt at the time. USC stole it a couple years later. So it really became, and then that became a trophy. Mm -hmm. So it really just kind of, everything built on one thing to the next. And then, you know, in the 70s, 80s, when more women's athletic programs were around, it went from not just being football, it went from being, you know, basketball under John Wooden, USC's teams were always good as well, to then you added all these other programs, and it really became a nationwide, every sport rivalry. Yeah, and it, it really has carried over to all the other sports, as well as the student body. Because I know there have right, been pranks right. going back and forth. Uh, the bear goes in hibernation yeah. for UCLA. Right. Tommy Trojan gets guarded, and, and we wrapped up. Yeah. What are some of the student pranks that you covered in the book? Well, there's a lot. You talk about, you know, some of them are, you know, big deals. Some are, you know, small things that, you know, small when you look at it now, but big at the time. Um, but kind of one of my favorite ones is 1936. USC kind of got the upper hand on a prank. They burned SC onto grass on UCLA's campus. And, Everyone walks by and they see the, you know, the SC block logo. And uh, so, the, you know, SC fans are feeling themselves, oh, that's pretty cool. 37, they try and do the exact same thing. Oh, UCLA fans weren't having it. <laughs> UCLA students, they find them doing it, catch them, tie them to a flagpole, and uh, call the police. Police, you know, respond to the, the incident, come down there. They say, okay, we're going to let you go, SC fans, after two hours. And they encourage, the police encouraged UCLA fans and students to verbally berate U the USC pranksters, mm -hmm. um, eventually letting them go afterwards. And uh, you know, you know, things like that, You've had, you know, 39, 41, 52, there was a prank, 67, there was a big prank. So it happened all the time, you know, from the helicopter dropping manure to releasing crickets. Uh, it's something that, you know, it's, it's really, there's never any lull in the pranks. Yeah. It happens all the time. And, and, uh, and even if they're minor, they're always fun, they're always interesting. I, I think there was one year, and I wanna say it was, um, USC UCLA, where everyone flips the card over yeah. in the stands, yeah. and it's supposed to say UCLA and flipped over, and it was USC, or yeah. maybe it was vice versa. Yeah, back, back in the 70s, 80s, card shows were really, you know, an every game thing. Yeah, yeah in, you, in the stadium themselves. Yeah, in yeah. the student yeah. section, yeah. and you know, now you they happen every once in a while, but that's kind of a thing of the past for the uh -huh. most part. Well, back then, uh, UCLA was doing a card show where you know they're gonna flip the card and they're gonna spell the script UCLA. And uh, USC fans kind of got into the student section, infiltrated the student section, and put the little SC logo in the, in the top corner. Yeah. Um, so all these pranks, they go back and forth. SC wins one, UCLA wins one, but there's pride every time. Yeah. You want to win every one. When they do it, you think, ah, that's no big deal. When you do it, it's the greatest thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, that, there's tons of stories about that throughout the book. And now this carries over into homes, because mm -hmm. I, I do live in a house divided. Yeah. My wife went to UCLA. I went to USC. Um, I know you interviewed Rodney Sermons, right. and, and Rodney was a teammate of mine, yeah. and his younger brother yeah. goes to UCLA. So there are some, do you cover any of that, or do you, you know, are yeah. there family rivals? Yeah, we, we, t we talk about it um, a few different occasions. Um, there's actually uh, one, one in, I believe it was 1953, where two brothers, there's one on each side, and their mother died the night before the game. Uh -huh. And one brother chose to play, the other one didn't. And it kind of became an issue. You know, you, you valued football more than being there for the family. There's so many things like that. Um, like you said with Rodney, he was, Rodney Sermons, he was my Pop Warner football coach mm -hmm. when I was in seventh and eighth grade. And uh, I knew he was an SC guy back then. Then in high school, I played with his brother, Brandon, mm -hmm. who then went to UCLA. Um, so, you know, there's just so many, you know, families that are split. The allegiance are split. And you have to deal with it 365 days a year. Yeah, because when you're on the losing side, yeah. it's no fun. Right, it's tough. Now, I've had the, the pleasure of, of experiencing uh, the oldest rivalry in college football. Mm -hmm. I've attended two Harvard-Yale games. Um, to me, one of the most glamorous and pageantry and, and uh, just overall class. I, I've been to the Army-Navy game. 
and, and that is something definitely special, a uh, special rivalry in college football with great tradition and history. When people talk about rivalries for college football, typically it's the Iron Bowl. It's yeah. Alabama, Auburn, yeah. or a Michigan, Ohio State. Where, where do you see USC, UCLA, or in your case, UCLA, USC, right. in this rivalry? It's right at the top for me. I mean, I know that you know, I'm personally invested in the rivalry, um, but you just look at it from the facts alone. And there's no other rivalry with the exception of Duke and North Carolina, which is really a one rivalry sport mm -hmm. where you're that close. You're 12 miles apart. You deal with fans, alumni of the other side every single day. And so then you look at the actual history of the rivalry. I know a lot of people kind of get caught up in what's recent. And you know, in the, throughout the 2000s, UCLA hasn't been the program that it was prior. But you look at games, you know, like 1967. That's one versus four. Mm -hmm. US, UCLA is number one. They lose. USC is number four. They eventually win the national championship. Yeah. It was basically a national championship game. Yeah. 1952, same thing. If UCLA wins, they're going to win the national championship. They lose. USC then loses to Notre Dame. Neither gets the national championship. So for so, for so many years, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, even a few times in the 90s, the winner of the game would go to the Rose Bowl. So it's not just you know the proximity. It's it's the football, yeah. and uh, you know it's one of the best rivalries in sports. And that, my in my opinion, it's the best yeah. um, because of everything that comes along with it being so close and dealing with fans from the other side every single day. Now, any Bruin or any Trojan, any fan that's watching this show, we all have that memorable USC rivalry game, UCLA mm -hmm. rivalry game. Whether it's a good good memory or a bad yeah. memory, what's your favorite USC UCLA game? Well, I kind of look at it two ways. Um, there's the games that I've been at, the games that I've watched, and then there's the ones that I've studied. And no matter what, there's no getting around that the ones that you're there are more emotional, mm -hmm. the ones that you've seen. Um, so there's the, you know, some of the older games, 1952, 1967, we touched on those, tie game in 1936. These are all big games. But for me, it's the ones I've been at. And so you look at 2006, USC's number two. They're one, one win away from going to the BCS National Championship. UCLA wins 13-9. That was one of the most fun days of my life as a UCLA fan. 2012, pouring rain at the Rose Bowl. USC has been the dominant program for so long. It's Morris first. UCLA wins. It was kind of the whole euphoria of the whole thing. Yeah. The rain is like, bring on the rain. Yeah. Um, so and there's other ones, uh, 1992, um, John Barnes. And there's so many that. Uh, I'm bringing up all the good. For a UCLA fan, <laughs> well, course, yeah, yeah, for the ones I've been at. Yeah. Um, they're all good, the yeah, good memories. Yeah. I'll you know, ignore some of the, the not so fond memories. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in the book, we cover everything. Yeah. Um, the good and the bad. And so, you know, even the, the games I don't like, last year, the year before that, um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> it's just nothing, you, you can't get around it. And for 365 days, you have to deal with it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for me, I look at the games, obviously, that I, that I enjoyed. But there's just so much more, and it's all covered in the yeah. book. And, and a power talk with Riley Layton with my top five books. Actually, the John Wooden book was number one. They call me coach. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I know I got a lot of criticism from my Trojan family yeah. that I chose a UCLA book first. But this is a great book. Uh, you know, I know, especially in Southern California, you know, the, the rivalry between USC and UCLA, those people that really, you know, it, for mm -hmm. them, I think for most of it, it is. This is going to be a great read from them. Um, share with the viewers where they could purchase the book and where part of your proceeds are going. Because I know you're donating. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the book is all over the place right now. It's on Amazon. It's on the Barnes & Noble website. Um, it's on createspace.com. Uh, it'll be on the UCLA store within the next week or so. And in the USC, two stores on campus it'll be. Um, and we're, we're working on a bunch of other stores, some local Barnes & Noble, uh, Target, Walmart, uh, some, a few other places. Um, but the best place to get it right now is Amazon, easiest place. Just search my name, search the name of the book. It'll be there. Um, and as for the proceeds, uh, part of 10% of the proceeds is going to the Avery Huffman Defeat DIPG Foundation. Um, I, like a lot of fans, heard about uh, Avery Huffman and the story from uh, her parents, Brandon and Amanda Huffman, um, and how she had inoperable brain cancer, and uh, kind of followed the story the whole way. Um, and eventually, uh, she passed away, um, and her, her parents are doing a lot of work to try and find a, a a remedy and, and uh, get this solved and so there's so no other families have to deal with this mm -hmm. um, the cancer itself is something that um, specifically targets young children um, and uh, so you know dealing with and hearing the uh, the stories of everything uh, just trying to do my part yeah so you're getting a great read obviously part of the charity um, 
you know, the proceeds uh, of the sales go to the charity. So it's a great read for a great cause. Tell us where can we find you on Twitter. Yeah, you can follow me at Spencer Stuvey. I'm always posting random college football facts, random UCLA USC facts, and there'll be more information about the book on there as well. Yeah. And it's a good time to remind you, follow us as well on Facebook and Twitter at Sports Scene TV. I am Ryan Layton. Spencer, thank you for being with us once again. And thank you for watching this Sports Scene TV special. Should we do an eight clap or a victory no, we, sign? We yeah, we get the fight on. I, I say the victory eight sign. Eight clap. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll just let each fan decide. Great read. Check it out. Find it on Amazon or in your local stores. Spencer, once again, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks for watching Sports Scene TV.